Well, hi everyone, and welcome to a live edition of Coffee with Craig. And today I'm going to address some of the things that are happening in the world. Um, I particularly want to look at Kate Middleton, and I've got a few things to tell you about that, a few predictions, also a prediction about King Charles that I want to make as well. And also want to ask some of the questions about some of the other things that are going on that perhaps people don't tell us about. Like, why is Barack Obama coming to visit Rishi Shunak? What's going on in the background with Trump? Lots of things like that. But I'm going to be taking your questions as well here live. So the show could go any direction. I've got things I want to share with you, share with you already, but there's going to be some interesting live questions from the guys just joining us now. So welcome to Coffee with Craig. Hi, everybody. And I'm Craig Hamilton Parker. I'm a psychic medium. Those that joined the show know this. If you've joined the show, wanted to find out about coffee and things like that, um, I'm afraid you're going to be very disappointed. Now, this show is all about predictions, about psychic world, about um, the, particularly what happens happening with the world and, and things like that. And I, I want to share with you some of my, my thoughts and feelings today um, about what's going on. And um, thanks for joining me. I see we've got loads of people piling in already in the live chat. Um, and I'll later on, as the show progresses, I'll take a few of your um, a few of your questions, you know. So let me just share a few thoughts with you, uh, first of all, on some of the uh, things that are happening in the world, you know, first of all, my thoughts, first of all. Now, one of the ones that's dominating here in the UK um, is in the press is um, Kate Middleton. And I've already, um, and I'm sorry to those of you who prefers me to call it Catherine or Catherine, Princess of Wales or whatever you are. Now, Kate, we know her as Kate. That's anyway, that's what press often call her. Anyway, um, is what's going on with Kate Middleton. Now, I, you saw my other prediction a little while just um, as um, she was about to go into hospital before I made some predictions saying that I felt things were a lot, in a way, a lot worse than, than, was being revealed to us um uh and i felt that king charles if you remember if you have a look at the other video i'll probably i'll see if i can put it up at the end of this one but i said that king, king charles um his his cancer was a sort of a little bit at that time of a bit of a smoke screen um to hide more serious issues that were going on with kate because obviously immediately the press's attention goes bang let's go let's the king he's ill you know and and he's going in for what you know um, and I think originally the king was going in for um, what was probably thought to be a benign sort of condition. Um, but they used that as the press focus. But what was going on with Catherine in the background was something more concerning. Um, and of course, the, the focus was on Charles. But now people are saying, mm, hey, just a moment. Um, this there's lots going on. Why? Why are we getting, for example, these uh, silly um, photoshopped um, images going up where it wants to show everything's fine and dandy. Everything's wonderful. Everything's perfectly all right. Look at this lovely family. And then we start looking very closely at the photographs and it doesn't take uh, people long to spot that, you know, the hands look wrong that's a sign of ai being used isn't it and uh, uh, all sorts of little bits on the picture are, are looking a little bit wrong so the question is is this really a recent photograph and of course the photograph thing um if it was taken by william 
wow, what brilliant photographer he is. He can do all these kingship or, or soon to be kingship duties. Um, and yet he can he can he can be a super skilled photographer. Yeah, you know, maybe he just pressed the button and Kate set it up. But it's one hell of a job to get a photograph where everybody in the family are all smiling at once. And and I think that's often a problem, isn't it, with these royal photographs? So everything's got to be absolute perfect, absolute perfect family. And maybe they're falling victim of their own PR. Uh, the royal family. I don't know. What do you think about that? I mean, I think there's um, a lot that would make people um, raise big questions. And of course, it's all over the Twitter feel, sphere at the moment. I haven't looked at all of it, but I had a quick look at some of the type of things people are saying there. I mean, there's people saying, is Kate Middleton a clone? And is this a, a, a hiding up for something that she's a clone? Um, is there something hidden in the background as a dispute or a breakup between uh, William and Kate that everything's not as rosy as they'd like us to see uh, questions asking of why is Kate so thin has she always been that thin why is she so thin has she been hiding something for a long time and could there even people are saying be a domis domestic um, problem there because uh, we know that William can also have a bit of a temper that's been kind of picked up by Harry and things but you know is that more than we we thought you know, is there is there something um, serious going on? Indeed, uh, I see people putting quotes in there at the moment. Will she be even be retiring from public life? People are asking about Kate. Has she had enough? Is she tired out? Has she sort of thought, you know, Harry and Meghan stepped out? Why can't I? You know, I'm more interested in my family. So there's loads and loads of questions raising their head. And people are asking, is there something more behind this? And um, so I, I, I'm going to address that in a moment, because one of the things I want, I've got my thoughts about this. Um, but I've also um, wanted to ask, I've asked the Yi Ching about it, too, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, particularly with with uh, Catherine. But um, let me just say one other thing before that. Now, I. Um, I didn't sleep so well last night because I woke up in the middle of the night with a really, really one of those sort of very super powerful dreams, you know, and it came out of the blue. And um, I'm a great believer that dreams sometimes can um, show, um, sh sh give predictions, give insights, but they also get muddled up with your own personal stuff sometimes. So we've got to always be very careful with dreams as being a form of prophecy. Um and I would really be interested, actually, after this show's gone live, because you won't have time now while we're live. But maybe if any of anyone else out there has had any interesting dreams about the royal family, because sometimes um, strange dreams occur simultaneously. Whole populations have dreams at the same time. They're like, for example, the people that were to go on the Titanic, for example, many of them reported very strange dreams before taking the journey and some cancelled the journey because of these dreams, you know, so um, yeah, share that with me. But I had this I was dreaming last night that I was with King Charles of all things. And and in the dream, it was all very um, matter of fact and all very um, all very ordinary. I saw, oh, hello, Charles. It's nice to see you <laughs> sort of thing. as if we were good mates sort of thing. Of course, we are not. But, you know, I just had this dream and it was all very ordinary. And that's some, often for me a sign that a dream is saying something. Actually, it's the ordinariness of the situation that often makes you um, makes you think. And I was with Charles and with us suddenly we found there was a child with us, a child with about, um, I would have said, nine nine years old or something like that you know from the height and there was a child with us and we both noticed that he was he was wearing a wedding dress right first of all we looked and the, the child was wearing a wedding dress. a young child wearing a weather dress a wedding dress of all things it, it i couldn't tell if the child was male or female there was a oddness about whether this was a boy or a girl and i couldn't tell in in the dream whether it was a boy or a girl and charles was absolutely fascinated by this and he was looking at this and hold holding the sort of feeling the dress and we noticed the dress was all made of feathers interlaced feathers you know um so what was this wedding dress of feathers and what was this um child that was um part part male part female that was neither male nor female um, and in the dream, it all seemed very matter of fact and it seemed ordinary. And Charles seemed to be kind of 
very pleased by this. He seemed to be very fascinated by it. Um, and a, a feeling with him that he was he was going to go somewhere. He was going to go away. So obviously now I came and I woke up and, and I, I, I couldn't get back to sleep again, you know, and, and um and then um this morning I've I've sort of had to rethink about this. And I thought, well, actually, an an androgynous figure like that is is often seen as an angelic figure, isn't it? And and a wedding dress at first appealed to me. Now it's I thought so this is like a childlike angel of some sort. Could an angel be giving a message about Charles here? Could this be an angel that's come for him? And if uh, I'm very interested in Carl Jung and his psychology and his his uh, in, interpretations of dreams, you know, um, and one of the things is the wedding feast in a dream is often a symbol, um, an, an archetypal symbol, he says, often of transition into the next world. Not always a necessary a wedding in real world, but a wedding of the soul reuniting with the oversoul, with the soul reuniting with the spirit. So could this be a prophecy? about king charles could it be because that charles is going to go much sooner than we thought and could it be that charles has a much much more aggressive form of cancer than they're letting on to, to us you know i mean these forms of um prostate cancer are they can be different types from curable uh, and, and i know people who have it at the moment and so my thoughts are with them too who are trying to raise money actually um uh, and my thoughts are with them. And I know how awful it can be as, as a condition to have. And my own father died um, of prostate cancer and that it went to his bones and he died terribly of, of bone cancer. So I know what a terrible, terrible illness it can be. Um, and yet in the dream, it seemed like this was almost a good thing. You know, it felt as if perhaps he was ready to go. I, I don't know. It's a dream. Dreams can be, can, can be just very personal things sometimes. Jane and I did say that we felt that um, Charles would have a short, um, a shorter than expected um, reign on the throne. And we did see him in a wheelchair as well. So um, I, 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 I don't like to think negative things like this. So also in the world, even with major world events, um, uh, you know, we have free will. There's, there's, you know, things are not set in stone. This is what's important about when we talk about predictions or even prophecy, which says it is set in stone. But prediction says it's not set in stone, that perhaps there is um, a way to get around this in our own personal lives. I always tell people, you know, the way forward is not set. You have free will. So I always want so I think I don't like to think negative about people, particularly what I think of people that are important for our society. So I, I want to think well. So maybe we could think a good thought. I, I don't like to see negative thoughts about this, but um, I just want to think. I wanted to share that with you because you guys want me to do tell me what I think, and I have to say what I saw. So it could it be that there's more going on in the background that we're not aware of? If that diagnosis has been made, is William being sort of um, being sort of geared up? To for the succession now, and is that part of the silence from the um from the from the royal um household? You know, if it is an aggressive form of cancer, um, w you know that, that it's gonna, William's going to be super stressed on one level because suddenly, you know, you've you've you you've, overnight you're you're well soon you you may have to sort of be thinking about a coronation. I mean, just thoughts. I don't know. What do you think, guys? Am I wrong with this? I mean, I, that was my dream. Have So I'm interested if particularly afterwards when we've gone stopped going live, if you can put your thoughts. Have you had a dream similar? Because it would be interesting to see if others have had that dream or, or anything. Or do you think it's wrong? And I would also put a healing thought, too, because I would like a healing thought to go out because I think it's um, it's it would be good to be did that, you know. Um, so, like I say, destiny's not set, um, whatever, ultimately. So that was my dream. But then I, I was also wanting to, to think deeper about um, Kate Middleton and what the prediction for her is and where we're going with that. And my thought is there's also, like I said in my first um, video about this, and, and I've mentioned before, as I felt that there was much more in the background. That was the sort of thing I was saying before. I felt there was like I felt she'd had um, a very insist. That's what my feeling was before. And I still feel it's something where we've had a serious 
um, operation with an ovarian cyst. I, I, I think the the um, operation they said she had may be something as well. But I think there was another one that was also known about and uh, also can be very serious if it goes wrong, or if, it's, if, it, if it's cancerous, for example. But I think she's had a, a ovarian cyst and I think it's benign. So I don't see Kate um, sort of leaving this world or anything like that soon. Um, and I feel that she'll recover from it. And I think many of the um, the things that are saying in the background may be just people, because when you leave a blank, everybody wants to fill, fill it in, don't they? What is going on? And really, it's the fools in the royal family not telling us more, don't you think? Um, shouldn't we be um, kept informed? Because this is the this is the symbols of of British society. So, so th this is my thoughts with it. So I thought, well, what? Let's see what the Yi Ching says about Kate Middleton. So I'm going to come to my very battered copy of the Yi Ching that I've had all my life, <laughs> and you know, we can got duct tape on it, holding it, holding it together. It's so old. Um, I, I, st I bought it. I was given it when I was 14 years old. So I've been using it almost daily ever since and i've had to stitch it together quite a few times now the Yi ching for those that don't know about this this is uh, the old chinese oracle um it's thousands of years old we don't know how old it is they at least five thousand they reckon some sources think it could go back much further than that now it was used in ancient china it's it's a combination of things like taoism which is kind of uh, the idea of the Tao was hard to explain really but it's like i see it as like the one that becomes the many splits into the yin and yang right so it's the it's also like the center of things so it means the way so when we can con consult the yi ching which is a book of changes which shows the changes that are happening in our world so it doesn't say everything's fixed but it says it's in a state of change we can find out the condition of um around around um uh, a, a question and it was used a lot in, by the by the empress of china to 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 make decide matters of fate for the for the few, for fate matters of state not fate matters of state for and things like that so it was a fascinating uh you know even mao couldn't chuck it out you know it was that it was that ingrained into the culture of china it's, it's in essence it's the absolute essence of what chinese culture is and hopefully will be again one day um so i i cast the I Ching, and I, we've had this hexagram before what you might remember when i was talking about uh, something else in the past and you can have multiple layers to a, a hexagram now hexagrams number of yin and yangs when i cast them that are represented with yangs with a straight line yins with a broken line and we stack those together from the bottom up to get what's called a hexagram right now this hexagram that i got is now i my Chinese is worse than my Sanskrit. Um, Jia Ren, is it? Or Chia Yen? I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I'm wrong. <laughs> Undoubtedly. But it means the, the family. Um, in the Wilhelm translation, it's called the family or the clan. It can also mean the household. It's a probably more general word of the household. And this will, this symbolizes the state of, um, it says that it, we get the family right, the world's right. But how interesting that of all the things that the Qing should come up with is this hexagram called the family, which we're talking about and I'm asking the question about the royal family and in particular with Kate. And I find this Yi Qing so, so intriguing that it uh, so many times I've consulted it over my lifetime. And yet every single time it's different. It takes on a personality. Anyway, I'm going off. So the, the I want to just come. I don't want to go through the whole thing because that's too much for you. But the basic thing is it's about the family. And it says the main judgment line for the Qing says the family, the perseverance of the woman furthers. OK, so immediately it talks about the family. It talks. We know we're talking about Kate Middleton um, it, and it gives it, it says it talks about the importance of the woman in the family. Basically, the family hexagram is all about the importance of each person finding their place within the family and therefore finding their place in society. And everybody does their duties correctly. Everything falls into place. And so the world falls into place. And the family is a representation of the society at large. Fascinating. That's what the royal family is, surely. That's what it's meant to be anyway. Um, and so I wanted to come to what we call the moving line. Now, it has 
<clears throat> a nine in the fifth place, which means it's got a yang in the fifth place. Now, that's this. That's the governing section of the uh, that's the, the fifth place is for a yang line in the fifth place is a good thing. It's a strong line. It's a yang play, yang line in the yang position. So just like a six in the second place is good for a yin line. But this is generally not always. But that is it gives a good position. So it's a very, very positive, very positive to have not just this hexagram, but to have that. Um, in that place in the ruling position. So it's very auspicious in terms of the recovery of Kate Middleton. It would be very good. And it would show her role later on, because this is a position of leadership as well in the fifth place. This is a this is usually one of the ruling positions. You lost my camera for a second. <laughs> uh, it's back again. Uh, you might as well see me go. <laughs> so it's a ruling position. So it's quite important position. And this is what it says of the um fifth place and interesting listen to this as a king he approaches his family fear not good fortune as a king does that mean perhaps william becomes the king it talks about a king a king position it actually says remember we talked about the emperors as well of china but it says as a king he approaches his family fear not good fortune now, the king's symbolic. So this is from the Wilhelm translation. It says a king is the symbol of a fatherly man who is richly endowed in mind. He does nothing to make himself feared. On the contrary, the whole family can trust him because love governs their intercourse. His character of itself exercises the right influence. So it's talking about positive things here. So I think I think this could be hidden stuff here, actually, as well. but. I think that something good is going to go on there. And although we've not been told what we should be told about Kit Kate Middleton, perhaps there's not such a bad problem as perhaps people fear. Perhaps there's not such a big cover up. But my thoughts still go to the king. Is there something they're not telling us about the king? Now, I'm going to take your questions in a moment, but there's a couple of other thoughts about things that are going on. Um, and this might seed a few other ideas for you with. Um, maybe some of your questions later um barack obama has just come and made a nice surprise visit to see rishi shunak and i asked the question why why does obama want to see rishi shunak one of the official um answers for this is that he's come over here um to talk about things like the dangers of artificial intelligence so rishi shunak now is actually scrambling for his life here in the UK. This is another prediction I've made. I've made before and said that Rishi Shunak will be pulled from power before the uh, general election. Um, and it looks like, it, you know, I said this a long time ago, beginning of last year. Um, and here we go. We see in the press lots of things saying about that there's been they've been trying to pull him from power. But he threatens to he will threaten to call a general election immediately if they try to pull him from power, because that man is more interested in his own personal power and his own position than he is about the country or his party. He's not a good man, in my opinion. Um, and but that's worth feeling what's going on there. Um, Obama has a similar mindset in many ways, because I feel he's a man that has not left the reins of power and still pulls the strings in the background. And a bit like um, another man, Tony Blair here, also pulling the strings in the background. A hidden agenda, I feel, is in the background between a number of people where they are particularly using um, the immigration agenda to um, sway public opinions and sway um, votes in America in particular. I feel that we're, immigration is being weaponized. And here in Europe, immigration is being weaponized. Because who do these people swarming the country vote for? Who do they vote for? They vote for the people that let them in. So in America, they vote for the Democrat Party. Here in the UK, they would probably more likely vote for the Labour Party um, because it's um, it, it was Tony Blair's agenda behind that. But Rishi Shunak is is has been shot in the foot with what he wants, and I wonder whether anything he says is is true at the moment. So what's going on there with Obama uh, and Rishi Shunak? I feel that it's again Obama's attempt to sway political movements. He can perhaps see 
that Rishi Shunak is going to lose power. Perhaps he wants to sort of show a little bit of support for Rishi Shunak in this case to try to keep um, this puppet man, as he is, in power. Because he's he's definitely not a man who is, is re represents, I think, any side of the political party's um, agendas. Um, he's he's neither left, as we call it, or right here in the UK. He's, he's, and he's not even in the middle. He, he's hated by everybody on all sides. I still feel, and this is another prediction, but I've said it already for this prediction, that he will fall from power. Um, Elon Musk has been posting some interesting stuff about this too. I suggest you have a look and see if you can find some of the things he's been um, uh, tweeting about. Another thing that came to mind as well, I was thinking about that Va Va Wagner person in um, uh, Russia, um, Brzezolgin, something, Brzezolgin, I think his name was. The, the, uh, I got a feeling he's not dead. I got a feeling we might get another, someone, something's going to come up from that again. Um, and that the Wagner group, is, uh, uh, there might be some other things happening with that in due course. My feeling with the Wagner group in Russia, this is coming, is, is that it's been compromised as the group and and that we're, that they are part behind the immigration problem of pushing people up through Africa to try to bring the downfall of Europe by swamping the, the Europe with um, people that are poor people, basically. Um, so that's my thoughts with some of that. Um, Another one that people have been asking about is if Bridget Macron is a man. And um, I think that I think there's something behind these stories. I don't see her as a man as such. And that could be proved very quickly. But um, did was it was uh, was Bridget Macron um, a, 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 tr a trans person for a long time? And is that what's behind the French politics here? My feeling is there's something very, very wrong there. There is something wrong. And I feel there's another, this is another one of these big things that they don't tell us about, because could it not cause an awful lot of upset in an already unbalanced France um, where the right wing in France, as we call it, you know, um, are, are now ready to pounce and ready to take over the government and, and with their um, and we could be we could see Macron pushed out of power. I felt this was another prediction I saw earlier in the year when I would start making my predictions because I get the sense that Macron's going to be pushed out of power, and it could be this Bridget business that could be the final straw that breaks the camel's back. Okay, so those are some of my thoughts. Um, at, at what I feel is going on, and also one last thing, of course, is you know. Again, we've got the Donald Trump business where he can't get his bond now. Um, other people are now turning in the background to try to sort of constantly try to force him, stop him going into office at all, stop him from running. This was something I spoke about so far in the background. Um, and I feel that, you know, I get the sense that the powers that be uh, could also be um, seen quintessently with this Obama. I get the feeling Obama's still trying to run the country from the background, just like ex-prime ministers here in the UK still struggle to try to run things in the background. You know, people long gone, like Blair, for example. Um, he's perhaps more self-evident. But I feel that there's, there's, there's a lot going on still to try to stop Trump, and we're going to see a lot more with that coming up anyway. Um, and he's, he's a man that will win. He will win and woe betide those that um, stood against him, because um, I know people hate me saying this. So those that come here who don't like me saying these things, but I sense he will win. Um, and that's not me just saying that. Um, I feel he will. And then and you remember I said that the black vote would turn on Trump's side. Um, I've started watching a few videos around and it does seem that the black vote has now really done what I was seeing. They're going on his side. They see this guy as a guy that's being persecuted. And um, I feel that will uh, change things here in the UK. I think we've got, again, the governments do not do not deal with the issues we're concerned about. Nobody gives a damn about whether you get a couple more pence in your tax breaks and things or a few more percentages on national insurance going down and things like that. People are concerned about the fact that the country's fallen to bits. Uh, we have potholes in every single street corner we have areas of the country that have been overrun with so many people coming in through not just illegal immigration but migration generally those are the things that people want addressed 
both the people that have been here for a long time and anybody that says anything against it is a racist. And that's crazy thinking. We need to break the woke. And that's that's how you'll get your votes. Anyway, I've been going on. Um, let's have a look at your questions now, guys. So sorry, I've seen see, I've had one eye on on what's going on on the corner of the screen here. I can see you, you're coming in with thoughts. Um, so let's have some of your um, questions, your thoughts. So um, it's probably a good time to put them in now because you put them in already. You might need to put them in again because I won't be able to scroll up the screen to get right to the top of the screen to go through. So if you want to put what you've got now. Yes. <laughs> Um, I still feel that's going to happen. Um, it, the, 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 it's a Candace Owens sort of character. That's she's got that same quality of personality. I don't think Candace Owens allowed to because of her, her background, but I, 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 I don't think she's by the rules allowed to stand it. But that type of quality of person, we may yet see that person um, arise. Um, Civil war in the USA. Um, not to that level. I, 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 but I still think if if Trump loses, I think we could see that. But I feel Trump will win. Um, and I've just said about that. I, I feel he has aggressive prostate cancer. Um, or oh, he's going very quick. Asking here. Is free world just a yes or no choice in the moment, holding no power over destiny already written? Um, uh, well, it, it, free will is is our choice, and choice is usually a yes, no, in one form or another. Um, it's a bit yes or a bit no sometimes, and in betweens. But uh, free will is the critical thing, uh, and that applies both in our life and in the world at large. So we have free will because without free will. Where would we be? There, there would just be a, a play running, wouldn't it? It would just be a film that we're watching. But no, we can interact. So free will is the key. And it's the key to make a better world. Thoughts are things. The thoughts we send out, the prayers perhaps that you want to send out, the positive images that you send out. So you send a positive thought, say, to King Charles, it'll help him. And then people like me will be wrong, which is what we want. I don't want bad things in the world. And uh, but also we can send the positive thoughts for a better world. And I feel we will have that. Haiti is, uh, you know, the interesting thing with Haiti is that um, the Dominican Republic next door won't let any immigration from Haiti into the um, Dominican Republic. Um, so it seems to me very wrong that. Um, so many countries in the world will not open their borders. And you would think that Dominican Republic would allow, you know, because of very similar peoples in many respects, um, to let people in. I think the uh, Haiti is just going to go, since the huge earthquake there, it's had its problems. And I, my feeling with it's unfortunately, it's going to get worse and worse because they've stormed now the last of the remaining um, decent properties and things like that the, the more affluent areas <coughs> and my feeling is haiti's just going to get to the point where it's pretty much starvation going on and it'll be united nations in there trying to hold it together and um unfortunately it's it's not a good thing sorry d i feel it's a bad bad way forward with that Yeah, and of course, this is going to be the other issue is where do we, where everybody's going to flee, aren't they? And where do they go? Where do we where do we put all these people? Because it seems everybody, <coughs> excuse me, everybody by default has to go to the affluent West, um, be in America and Europe and things like that. But like I've said before, um, sometimes it would be better to put people in, into into countries that are more suited to their what they've previously been used to, um, and particularly the Arabs, uh, Arab, I'm saying Muslim type of people. Why doesn't, you know, why why can't we see Saudi Arabia take people to Gaza? Why can't we take, we've got a border with Egypt. Why can't Egypt take people in? Why can't some of the rich Arab countries take in these brothers, you know, because why send them all to the West? Uh, and the same with people from Haiti. Um, would they have to all be pushed into America? You know, I think uh, and if you raise these questions, you're considered a, a 
that you're considered as being racist. But it's not about race. It's sheer practicality. And it's about cultural differences because, you know, um, multiculturalism has failed miserably. And people are saying that more and more, you know, and it has. So thank you. I've been researching on the history of Haiti. It's really bad. over It is. And it doesn't get enough coverage, actually, either, because it's you know, terrible things are going over on over there and it's been in a terrible problem for a long time um i'll take a couple more. yeah and nancy pelosi uh, particularly um is um she doesn't want to give up does she she's she's one that uh, has a real hatred for all things trump Particularly. And if Trump gets in, she'll want to keep fighting. But I get the feeling she's going to get pushed out. And once Trump is in power, I think she won't get back in. I think she's uh, will become a figure that will gradually fade away. Uh, I feel with her. If they get rid of Sunak, the conservatives and the Labour will be neck and neck. And it could even be a narrow conservative win if um, if Labour if they carry on with Sunak, it will be a it will be a Labour landslide. My feeling is that there's something going to happen in the Tory party that's going to um, cause an upset. And if um, Penny Watson face gets in, I, I, I don't think she'd be strong enough. You need someone quite strong. Right. I feel um, to make it win. What ideally would be the thing is if Nigel Farage joined the um, uh, Conservative Party, that would almost be their saving grace. And although he's a hated figure by many people. I think a lot of people, when they watch him more and more, realise he's not such an extreme character as he's been painted. He is talking about how people feel. But until the stories listen, you know, that's where we've got problems. I don't think Putin will attack the USA, not directly. If the Ukrainian war is one that I'd have to do a whole long one on again. But my general feelings were... With it, it'd be quite interesting if you have a look back to the original video I did before it happened, before that anybody thought there was going to be a, a war in Ukraine. Um, as I saw it coming and I commented and said I felt that would happen and it did happen against what everybody is thinking. There had been a bit of a build up of arms at that time. I said Putin will go in. And I, I felt at that time that it would all come down to a big slither of land all along the um, east. Um, coast of um east coast of ukraine and it's, it's it's still in that state and that was what i saw at that time um and sometimes it your predictions are better with, with the less you know about what's going to ahead you know when you see something that is, isn't in the press or isn't any talk about or any rumbles about um but my feeling is um that it, putin will not attack the usa he would have he would have still he does have desires to um go for places like poland and things like that that's one i feel most at risk and i also feel um the um going south of um ukraine into the baltic states that's another area that i feel potent potin make make <laughs> the baltic states is an, is an area that i feel putin will make some attempt on in the near future Well, that's a lot, that's a nice, interesting one as well, because eclipses are interesting things because people used to really fear eclipses um, in ancient days. And in astrologically, eclipses are usually seen as something that throws energy into a situation. So if you look at whatever's happening around um, in, in the world, you want to start multiplying it by five or multiply it by 10 depending where the eclipse falls i think it's stirring stuff up um and i think what we're going to see um on the eclipse because particularly it's for america the, the big eclipse um i i feel it will um it, it just throws energy into the pot so astrologically i think we are going to start entering a better time soon though you know we've had um we've had uh pluto move uh into major changes which for the long term the eight of, eight of planets are much more long-term uh, issues to affect the world um i always like to think positively 
not just because I want to think positively, but I do feel positive. I, the world, you know, Jane and I look around the world sometimes and look at the people in the world and, I, and, and people that you encounter in your own life. And you think sometimes, how can people be so horrible? How can people be so rotten to the core? How can some people be so incredibly selfish? I'm almost amazed by it um, that people can be like that. And I know not everybody's like that, but the world at the moment, it does feel a bit like the eclipse. It does feel like all the rotten stuff comes to the surface, but it doesn't mean the whole thing's rotten to the core. It means that we're seeing some of the rotten people in the world. And my thoughts are that there, there's going to be a time when things will change, I, 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 a time when a bit more mature thinking will come on into the world. Uh, this woke and all the rest of it, it's really, it's just complete bonkers in my opinion and and once all that's out the way we might get some common sense start coming back and the spirituality in the world at the moment is a very very shallow sort of spirituality that we see in most people it's all about almost a self-love sort of spirituality it's all about loving luxury sort of spirituality i even saw um one product one one company said be the change i thought how dare they use a, a phrase paraphrase from gandhi to sell some bloody product. Um, it's horrifying. There's a very shallow spirituality in the world at the moment, although there's a great need for it, a bit searching for it. And there's a lot of fake prophets as well. You could People might claim I am, you know? but there are people I see out there who's claiming to be psychic. So I look at them and I think, these kite people are bonkers. What are they? <laughs> Why are people listening to them? And you might say the same about me. You know, Why are people listening to me? But I, I, I look at the world and think, you know, simple things. Simple. We need simple, simple spirituality. We just need to get back to basic common sense on so many levels, particularly with our spiritual thinking. And, you know, I think the time will come when we, we will get a turnaround eventually. I, I've said this so often. We will get a turnaround we will start to see a much more mature form of spirituality evolving we will find a, see a, a spiritual awakening where it comes where you know it's not just about you know putting candles around the bath it's more about actually making some major changes within oneself changing one's attitude changing one's thoughts changing one's perception of the world and doing some real proper inner work with really deep meditative work and 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 so on and all the other of all the religions of the world have their ways to uh, methods to get you up the mountain and getting up a mountain requires effort uh, and it's not just something that's just given to you you know it's something you have to work for it's something you have to work all your life for and it doesn't come quickly it comes over many many years of constant work and and it's like anything it, you, you have to keep it's like if you're memorizing something like i'm trying to learn italian you have to keep going over and over and over it until it the grain fits in until you've kind of built a track through the mind so it remembers it and it's the same with spirituality everybody wants everything nowadays handed on a plate dead easy you know and, and without effort and everything plays into that the whole internet the whole selling system nowadays is it's easy you know you even see you could become a psychic in five weeks <laughs> that sort of thing nonsense stuff everything takes hard hard work particularly spiritually and um i think um I think we, we need to, to, to work uh, much harder within ourselves to become spiritually developed people, all of us, every single one of us, you know. Um, so anyway, so this, this and what do we mean by spiritual work? We mean really just getting to the, back to the truth within ourselves, you know, because ultimately uh, I get asked to do things about the world and talk about the world out there and, and make predictions about the world out there, you know, and some of you will agree with what I say and some of you won't. And these are things that, you know, you have to say, I think sometimes, but ultimately more important than that is the work we do in ourselves, isn't it? That inner work, that going inside, because you don't need to come to people like me or you don't need to come to anybody else. You have to find the truth within yourself. You have to be the changes you want to see in the world. The way you act, the way you live, the what you do, the way you, you, you behave. All of those things are up to you, ultimately, not up to anybody else. Nobody else's opinions. Don't trust authority. Don't trust any authority, spiritual authority, political authority or any of it. You've got to be your own person in this world. You've got to have um, free will. You've got to take personal responsibility for your life and stop worrying about the world. Ultimately, because ultimately that's all going to fade away. 
one day we're all going to die. It's all going to be gone, every single bit of it. So whatever politics do or people do or, or, or whatever, all of that's going to be gone. We've got to get back to that very essence of ourselves, that inner light, which is the same for all people of all races, of all types, you know, of all persuasions, of all political sides. We're all ultimately light. We're all ultimately love. We're all ultimately pure consciousness. We're all ultimately infinite beings. And that's what we've got to get back to. The rest of it's all fluff. The rest of it's all the 10,000 things, as the Chin calls it, the things outside, the things that are away from us. What is of essence is who we are. And if we can find that, we find happiness because that's where peace is. That's where love is. That's where happiness is. That's where knowledge is. That's where absolute truth is. Truth that you know that can't be shaken, that no one can change your mind about because you know it to be the truth. And that's the way. Anyway, that's my thoughts. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. If you enjoy my work, please have a look at my website and any other things, particularly the my books and things like that. I'm always pleased to share those with people. And I hope you go and have a good read of some of my other ideas. Anyway, thanks for joining me. See you soon. Bye for now, folks. If you look back at my earlier predictions, and in particular the predictions I made on the, the newspaper, The Sun's um, website, I did actually say on there, the actual words were, there will be a flu epidemic linked to bioterrorism. My thoughts are that Liz Truss will make it to the final, um, be, the, be the next PM. I think she will actually have a final battle between her and Rishi Shunak. We've not seen the full end of Boris Johnson either, I tell you. But Rishi Shunak actually will eventually, I feel, be the next leader of the Conservatives. So I think there's going to be a few conflicts that Britain's going to be drawn into, including um, I think Russia is going to take some moves against Ukraine. I think she will make it past her Platinum Jubilee, which comes up this year. But I think after that, we'll see a sudden and quick deterioration in the Queen's health. And um, I think I think we might lose the Queen towards the end of 2022. There's going to be a huge, huge backlash. Um, uh, from over the Netflix programs and screening because I feel it comes out in at a bad time. Charles will come to become King Charles, um, but his reign, I feel, will be short. I said that um, Prince Charles would be hit by an egg. And of course, there it is, all in the press today. A huge swarm of people knocking the doors of Europe and America. Um, and I feel that Ukraine conflict is going to be a kind of a grinding conflict that goes on and on. I also feel that there's something going to happen in the Middle East as well. I, I, I feel as if there's going to be a sudden and unexpected thing happen in the Middle East. So I feel they're going to take it into their own hands and I feel we're going to get a strike from Israel. This is going to be one of the significant things in 2023.